Greetings Netrunners and today we're looking at the new Crimson Dust data pack starting with the runner cards and we'll begin with the Anarchs. First we have Mining Accident. It's an event, it costs two credits and has play only if you made a successful run on a central server this turn. The court must pay five credits or take one bad publicity. Remove Mining Accident from the game instead of trashing it. So if you've managed to make a successful run, this really allows you to get a little bit of extra economy, getting the money back you may have spent on said run by getting five credits, or forcing the corp to take bad publicity, which will make runs easier for you in the future. So a very good card if you want to go down that path of really getting um, extra economy from runs. Next we have Respiro Sites. Cost of zero, hardware cybernetics. When you install reciprocal sites, uh, suffer one meat damage. The first time you have zero cards in your grip each turn, draw one card and place a power counter on reciprocal sites. Respiro, sorry, yeah, sorry, it's a little bit difficult to pronounce there. Respiro sites. When respiro sites has three or more power counters on it, trash it. So it's a good way to protect yourself if you're getting a bit low on cards, because the first time you go down to zero, you draw one. Salvaged Vanadis Armory, cost of zero, resource clan. As trash, the corp trashes the top X cards of R&D. The X is the amount of damage you have suffered this turn. Use this ability immediately after you've taken, after having taken damage. Now this is a card that's more to put the corp off from damaging you too much, because obviously the corp doesn't know exactly what's coming in R&D, so they really don't want to risk an agenda being put into archives by you trashing a whole load of cards off the top of R&D using this. So they will probably want to avoid doing too much damage to you. So like if in certain Jinteki decks they deal like two or three damage to you all at once, then suddenly you're trashing the top three cards off it into archives and you could find an agenda that way and make it much easier to run on archives than on R&D. Next we have the criminal cards and we have Amauka. Amuka. Cost of three Memory cost of one. Program Icebreaker AI Virus. Whenever you expose a card or access cards, do not steal or trash any of them. Place one values counter on Umuka. Umuka has plus one strength for each virus counter on it. It has one, uh, one credit, breaks everything. This is a good one because it can make itself stronger just by succeeding at runs or even just exposing cards. And it has the ability to break ice subroutines, any ice. Very, very strong. However, whenever you do access cards, you cannot um, steal or act steal them if you want to increase the strength. So really, you have to build this one up from early on, build up its strength, doing things like just accessing cards you don't really need to, or turning down the opportunity to trash stuff and stuff, just to build up its strength. And then later on, you can use it and choose to uh, trash the cards that you want to trash. Now we have Caldera, cost of three, resource of virtual, has three credits, prevent one net or brain damage. Now this is just a really good virtual resource since it allows you to prevent any kind of damage, either net or brain. Uh, it doesn't prevent meat damage, however, since it prevents the brain damage, that's quite unique because not many things prevent actual full brain damage. And for only three credits, that's quite a bargain since it doesn't even have to spend a click to do it. Next one to the Shapers, and we have Diana's Hunt. Cost of four, event run. Make a run whenever you encounter a piece of ice. During this run, you may install a program from your grip, ignoring all costs. When this run ends, trash all programs installed using Diana's Hunt. Now this is fantastic, because although it's costing you four, while you're making this run, you can install any program, any icebreaker that you might need to break any piece of ice, free of charge. And then at the end of the turn, you trash it. Now, trashing the program is bad, but if you've got a way to get it back into your hand again, and this is a fantastic card, because if you've got a really, really strong but really expensive icebreaker, you can play it using this for free, use it to break through all the ice, and then at the end of the turn, it actually gets trashed, but then hopefully if you've got a way to get it back, you can get it back into your hand again, and if you've got another Dinosaur Hunt, do the same again. So I think this is a really interesting card, and I am looking forward to giving it a try. Now we have Reshape, an event at the cost of three. 
has swap two pieces of unrest ice. Now that's pretty big because Jinteki is the one that usually swaps around ice and stuff. But with this one, you can do the swapping around. If you've been able to reveal a piece of ice, or you've got a fairly good idea about what a piece of ice might be, you can swap it with one that you know is much, much weaker. Like if there was one that was placed early on in the game, and you know there can't be much to it, or if you had a look at using cards that expose it, and you know it's a really weak one, you could then swap it with a really strong one the corpse just put out that you know they're trying to stop you from getting to the servers with, and swap the two around which will give you a massive advantage because you could put their best dice somewhere that it will be no use to them at all. So that one also will be very, very interesting to see the runner messing around with where the ice is. Then we have Dummy Box. Cost of one, a resource virtual. Has a trash card from your grip. Prevent an installed card of the same type from being trashed by the corp. Now this is another interesting new thing for the runner. Allowing you to prevent the corp from trashing your programs and things. And all you have to do is trash cuff your grip to do it. So if you hold on to like a program in your hand and a resource or a connection, then whenever the corp tries to trash them, all you have to do is trash that card from your hand and you protect the ones you've got on the board. So it's an interesting extra little piece of protection there that could be work. And since you don't have to click or sacrifice this card either, it's also good for protecting itself as well. Then we have, for neutral cards, Corporate Defector. Root cost of zero, resource connection. Whenever the corpse spends a click to draw a card, not through a card effect, reveal that card. So this is a fantastic card because it's basically, whenever the corpse is drawing themselves extra cards, you're getting to see all of them. They can't hide the agendas they might have drawn. And you can also see all the stuff that they might be getting for economy, all the possible ambushes they're getting. This is a fantastic way to really control how the court plays and also to give you a heads up on whether they've got any agendas in HQ. I can imagine they'd want to try and trash this one as soon as possible. But also it does use a card slot and you got to think how much do you really need to know what the court has. Does it, will it affect your strategy? Will it affect how you play your deck? So I'm definitely going to give this one a try and see how it does. Until next time, Netrunners, that's been all the runner cards from this set. And next time we'll do the corp cards. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.